to your success. Light. Without light, there'd be no photography. In fact, what you're watching right now would be called a radio program. That would be a great pity, because you'd be missing to the finest exponents of the art of making photographs, not just taking photographs, Mr. Charles Green and Mr. Peter Dyer. Now, rumour has it that Charles Green was conceived in the dark, whereas Peter Dyer was conceived in the light. So there are no two better qualified photographers to teach you about light and shade, the essence of making fine photographs. First, I'd like to introduce you to a man who exudes confidence. He has a magnetic personality which charms the photographs out of his subjects. Subjects, yes. He's the king of wedding photographers. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Dyer. So I, I, I knew this girl about two years before I, before I spoke to her, and then I knew another Two years before I, before I asked her out, so, so I made up this song. You ever tell my baby squeeze me? Oh my hand. Every time my baby kisses me, I'm a nervous man. I get nervous. Get so nervous and shout. I get so nervous, mama. Feel like I could die. Now, when I knew Pam just ate, yeah, she took me to her bedroom. I said, Look at Pam, don't you think it's a bit too. Cause I'm nervous Yeah, I'm so nervous and shy I'm so nervous, mama Feel like I go down Mmm, a woman said let's get married Oh, have us a family Said you have the children's got nothing to do with me, cause I'm nervous. Well, yes, I'm so nervous and shy. I'm so nervous, mama. Feel like I could die. Now my woman said she loved me all her life. That's what she promised. When she kisses me, I get a funny feeling in my John. Cause I'm nervous. Yes, I'm so nervous and shy. I'm so nervous, mama, I feel like I could die. Now me and my wife are married. Mmm, got us a family. Got ten children, they look just like me, I'm not nervous. You won't catch me out. I tell you pretty women, I know what that love is all about. Thank you, Peter. Thank goodness you came back at the end like a true professional. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if Peter Dyer is the king of wedding photography, there's no finer emperor of portrait photography than Charles Green. Charles Green is a master of photography. He's also a master of sartorial elegance. So I'm sure we won't have that kind of problems. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles Green. I'm a professional photographer. My name is Charlie Green. I take some lovely pictures, the best you've ever seen. But not many people buy them, no matter how hard I try. 
In fact, not many people come to me. I really don't know why. I mean, a lady came for a portrait sitting. She says, how much will one 5x4 print cost? I said, if all you want is only one 5x4, you might as well go and get lost. And she did. An engaged couple came to see me. They said, what's your very cheapest wedding package deal? You see, we don't want to spend much on photography, but we'll make sure you get a free meal. Well, I took one look at that bride-to-be. She's ugly and fat and had a great big bust. I said, before I do your photography, a facelift and a diet is a must. She never booked me. A lady brought children to my studio. She says, do something for the kids, if you please. I took one look at her two monsters. I locked them up and I threw away the keys. You see, no matter how low a price I charge, people always complain and they get into a right old fit. They say, how much for a snap? We'll have to go away and we'll think about it. For a joke, I once said, Today is your lucky day. I'll do all your photography completely for free. Yet lo and behold, back came the same old response. Well, we'll think about it and we'll see. Then, in a flash of inspiration, I decided it's time for a brand new me. So I changed all my clothes, started smelling like a rose and acting like someone from Dynasty. It's funny that when you look smart and successful, how everyone starts thinking you're great. Now I charge 10 times more, yet I have clients by the score. And everyone wants to be my mate. They even persuaded me to do this videotape. They said it'll be a great big hit. Well, I hope you all understand what we'll be saying. And you don't think it's all a road of sh rubbish. Hello. Hello. It's hello from me. And it's hello from me. That's the great Peter Dyer. And that's the great Charles Green. And this is our great equipment that we use to photograph weddings and portraits and everything in the studio and on location. First of all, let's concentrate on the Hasselblad, a really fabulous camera, which is reliable and has produces beautiful quality negatives time after time, millions of times. In the studio, I use the 120 lens with a matte box in it. I have a soft filter, which I made myself from Christian Dior stocking, stuck over a piece of card. It is so easy to make and so cheap. One stocking will last you about 10 years. But make sure it's Christian Dior sheer black. It softens the image down fantastically well, and it reduces exposure about half a stop. I also use the Hasselblad in my studio, but I use the ELM. ELM. Uh, I like the electronic wind, uh, so I don't have to go back to the camera. Uh, I also use various uh, lenses, uh, 150, 100, 80 and 60. Uh, but generally I use uh, soft dial lenses uh, in, my, uh, in my camera. Well, I go back to the camera each time I've taken a, a, a picture, each time I release the shutter, because I work with this, with the, uh, this cable release, with a shutter up, the mirror up technique. That is, once I've look through the camera, focus properly. I want to concentrate on the peak of expression. So I put the mirror up and then I work on that expression. When I get that expression, just press it. Very good now, technique. Yeah, and what it does also, people who blink a lot, it avoids capturing a frame with their eyes closed. Because a lot of people, when they hear the clunk click of the shutter going up and everything, they blink from the sound and you actually take a picture of them with their eyes closed. This way, it's got rid of all the noise and I can concentrate and get that very, very peak. When I've got that peak, it's instantaneous. The other thing I can do, I can move away from the camera and go to the light and they can be looking into profile. I can be standing there, again, it's up, I raise it, when I've got that peak of expression. I can just gently click it and I have beautiful expression each time and I avoid having closed eyes. We also use the uh, Nikon. This one is uh, a Nikon uh, F800. I use an F3. Uh, but we both use the same attachment on the end of our lenses, um, which is the Pictrol, which is a softening device originally meant for enlarging lenses. But uh, with a little bit of ingenuity, we can stick these on the end of uh, uh, a lens. Now, 
This is a Tamron lens, which is a 7210. Uh, I generally work from a 7135. Uh, but whichever way you like, um, it gives a really good result. Where well, we use um, the T Max uh, 3, uh, 3200 and, um, yeah, and black, black and white. And white. Yeah, that's black and white. To yeah. get a completely different sort of uh, result other than the Hasselblad. So one with nice grain and uh, a good um, a finish to it, really good, nice black and white finish. People are asking for black and white now. Mm. See, the more variety you can offer to the customer, the more they'll buy. So if you've got this set up with the normal film which we're using here, which is the Exticolor Gold 220, I shoot a lot, I need to have 220. Once we've shot that, the portrait with this one, just a second later we can go over here to the Nikon and get a totally different sort of picture. All nice and grainy and soft and black and white with hardly any extra effort. Two different pictures. And we can zoom in on that one to get a really big close up. This one can be full length, far away. Two fabulous, differently pictures with no effort at all. And it sells well. Yes. For this as well, we use the um, uh, Minolta. This happens to be a Minolta 4. Uh, there's a new one that comes out, it's just coming out, I think we shall uh, have that. But uh, this, I've had this uh, a meter like this, the Minolta meter, for many years, and uh, I can't do without it. Really fabulous. I think you were going to say about the Elecron. Yes, it's, um, this camera is connected to the Elecron, to a transmitter, which is a radio control transmitter, and it fires the fill light, which is right in the corner. That fill light fires all the rest of the lights. But because the light is so fast, it travels so quickly, once that is triggered, everything goes instantaneously. It's a beautiful piece of engineering, totally reliable. You can fire so about 100 foot away, 200 feet away even, and it'll be totally reliable. All the lights will flash, and that's the main thing, because everything can be perfect. And if you press that trigger, that shutter, and it, it doesn't flash, you can say, oh no, it has to go every time. And this is totally reliable, really fantastic. Reliability really is the main aim. It sure so is, Peter. Something that's yeah. tried and tested. This uh, tripod, I think, is very good. I have something very similar. Uh, I think it's got a, on a ball bearing with a, a weight, so it's very easy to lift it and lower it. It's got a little tray over here, which holds bits and pieces, which is very useful. For instance, quite often, just a little, everything is perfect, but a little bit of hair needs adjusting, so you just go over to the sitter and just whoosh, flick a bit of hair like that, and that makes all the difference. And the other thing we have over here is a cover stick. Sometimes somebody's just got a little spot that, or a little blemish. So just by putting this little bit cover stick on them, it'll hide the spot. How's that suit? Yeah, it's good. good. Okay. <laughs> so again, whoops. <laughs> shouldn't come off on your hands like that. No, it shouldn't, should it? But uh, Give it back. you know, as photographers, that not everything happens uh, as you want it, and you've got to roll with everything. And you have to be prepared for everything. Yes. Like dirty hands. Have you got a tissue on you? Yes, I have. In fact, as a photographer, if you can roll with someone and make it easy, and uh, then you're well away of being one, one of the world's uh, greatest photographers. And nothing ever goes 100% right. It just doesn't. So we hope that everything will go right, but when it goes wrong, at least we're ready for it. Like we were now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's uh, what we use in the studio. We, as I said, we have all this equipment right at our fingertips and we're using it all the time. That's the main thing, we're using it all the time. It's not just once we'll use this in one sitting and one we'll use this. Every session we use both cameras, both types of film, a total different look. Should we talk about our lights now? Yes. Right, this is the, my main key light, which is the Elenchrom 5 foot Octa. Beautifully soft. You look inside this. The light actually is reverse mounted, so the flash tube doesn't come towards the person. It's facing away from them, inside there. The light spreads beautifully out over here in the silver, so it's all nice and soft there. Then it goes through this material, and it comes out beautifully soft. The great thing with this light is, you could be standing right in front of it, and photographing your subject, and you won't create a shadow. They will still be perfectly lit only about a quarter of a stop of exposure less than if you didn't stand in front of it. That is absolutely brilliant. It means you can go in front of them and not worry about being in front of the light. Fantastic light. The next light, after my key light, is my kick light, which sometimes I do use as a, as a key light. If I want a harsher effect, 
let's say I'm a man, I want to have a really dynamic light and a very harsh light, I will use this then as my key light. I will turn the, the key light down in intensity and use that as a fill, and this will become my key light. But for most of the time, this is the kick light. It has a parabolic reflector, which is, sits over here like that, with barn door, so you can control the light that's coming out over here. You can take this away. We'll see inside, inside this frame, I put some diffusion paper to soften the light because the flash bulb and the tube do face the subject. I want it to become much softer than that, so I put five or six layers of diffusion material inside here to make it really uh, a, a nicer light. Then we go on to the hair light. Over here. The barn doors and a honeycomb grid. This avoids the light spilling onto the camera and causing flare. It's directed to the hair. We take this out in here again to avoid the harshness of the tube falling onto the subject. I put a few layers of this material and also an amber gel which just gives a little bit of uh, colour to the hair, just brings out the brownness and, and the hair oil, a bit of highlight in, in dark hair. So it's just a nice idea, put a little bit of amber gel into there. This is, all of these lights are connected onto the Bowen's Hyde line, which is lovely because it, as I have only a small studio, uh, it saves studio floor space and I can bring it from side to side. I can swing it round very easily. So after the sittings, half the sitting's finished, I can just bring the lights around to the other side and take the sitting from the other angle. This is my Elinchrom backlight with a honeycomb grid on it. It's a nice soft light to the background, either white or black or grey. You can also take it off and stick a gel onto it, any colour gel with a bit of sellotape or masking tape. You don't need to buy a uh, special filter holder. Changes the background to any colour you like, to match whatever the person is wearing, or to complement with any colour they have. Or whichever colour portrait you want to hang in their home. Just some simple filters. This is my fill light. It's a bare bulb fill light, because you see the bare bulb, there's no reflector over it. The bare bulb is a beautiful light. It's really lovely and controllable. It creeps into all the crevices giving a gorgeous light. What I do, I bounce it off my back wall in the studio. If we're shooting from this side of the camera, all the lights will be this side, and I'll bounce it off this wall. When I transfer all my lights to the other side of the camera, I will transfer this on this boom arm, transfer the fill light to the other side, as all the other lights. I'll just switch this off. It's lovely to have a little bit of daylight. And I've produced this daylight window, which is artificial daylight. I have the Ellingcrum outside in the corridor, which is coming through here. It's being softened by this curtain, which is a shower curtain, very cheap shower curtain, which softens it, that makes it like a, a north light. And we just put a little bit of um, thin curtain over it, just to give it a lovely flowing appearance. Anybody who stands over here is fairly rough by daylight. So they can stand, they can see, they can pose them into the window, just if daylight's coming into the room. We've had fun all our lives in photography, and uh, I think you've got something you've invented. Well, you know what, photography, good photography, all it is, is claps. Claps? Claps. <laughs> claps. C-L-E-P-S. Composition, light, expression, pose, and space. Now, the more you put into that, into the claps, the better the photograph. So, we're going to look at all the different areas of claps, and try and get as good as we can. Right? Yes. Okay. Composition, composition of lines, space, design and lighting have all gone to make my picture European Princesses the award winner that it, that it has been. 96 it scored in America uh, a couple of years ago. When I photographed I saw these 13 girls in the Queen Elizabeth I hunting lodge I wanted them absolutely upright and royal. 
everyone was, except for the outside girls here and here, who bring our eyes into the photograph. The design is made by the girl in the check upon check. Other designs are in the oval of the doors and the windows. Straight lines used here and on the curtains to enhance the nobility of these girls. There are lines, diagonal lines and pyramids and C-shaped lines. The one C-shaped line, for instance, is just coming out here in a curve. But diagonal lines play the greatest part of this photograph. Diagonal lines, diagonal lines, diagonal lines, diagonal lines, coming straight through. And then pyramids, and little pyramids upon little pyramids. Also diamond shapes in here. The girl's look is, makes this picture what it is because they are focusing all on one area and that is the camera on me by the side of it. I have demanded their attention and got it. This is one of my ten Kodak Gold Award winners. It's called She's Mine. Look at the powerful way in which the man is leaning into the light, into that key light over there. And the way that the woman is leaning away from the key light, head back into the key light, eyes in the camera. Notice how the light which is skimming across her clothes, bringing out the detail in the black leather, and providing separation between the leather and the background. Now, on low-key subjects, what provides a shape is the specular highlight. On high-key subjects, it's the shadows that provide all the shape. Here, the specularity is bringing out the shape and form and providing this three-dimensional look. Now, notice the pyramids and the triangles. First of all, we have the line over here. If her hand was hanging down, just straightforward down, it would be a very boring composition. But putting a hand like this, we've created a triangle. Notice the man's hand going out like that. If it was hanging straight down, very boring, and the picture wouldn't be so good. It works so well because we have this powerful diagonal line which leads our eye up into the picture, into his face. We have, in fact, an S-curve here from there, going round like this and out. On the lady, we have a C-shaped curve. Our eye just floats around here, just hangs in that picture. Look at the space around it. There's no clutter in there. There's no plants, no plastic flowers. It's just pure, intense feeling. Our eye goes straight to the subjects. As we go in the picture, we go round the expressions and out again. Let's look at the triangular lines in the composition. Look at the angle of the head. Now, if the eyes were straight, we have a straight horizontal line going through there. It wouldn't be so good. Because we've tilted her head, the line through her eyes is diagonal. The same with the man. If his head was straight, and we drew an imaginary line across it, across the eyes, it would be a straight line, which wouldn't be so good. Because the head is tilted, we can draw a line right down here, beautiful triangular line. All these lines just add form and shape and intensity. The line coming up over here, the line down over here. All these lines and triangles. The more triangles we can create in a picture, the better the portrait. The more artistic and the more creative it will become. So therefore, we must always look to extend hands, to bring arms out, legs out, to create diagonals and triangles. A beautiful composition. Light. Light is probably the most important ingredient of the collapse. Because light is what makes something that is three-dimensional, in reality, when you transfer it onto paper, it makes it look three-dimensional on paper too. Otherwise, it'll just have width and height, and it won't have any depth. By using light, we can make that three-dimensional subject look three-dimensional on a two-dimensional piece of paper. 
That is so important because that makes all the difference between a professional looking portrait and one that any amateur could have taken. The three dimensional look. Now, how do we achieve that? Let's look at this ball for a moment. Now, is it a yellow circle or a ball? We don't know. It could be a circle, it could be a ball. There's no shape to it because it's very flatly lit. Now, what happens if instead of flat lighting it, we move the light very slightly, we begin to get a specular highlight on the top left and the shadow on the right. And the more we move the light round, the more the circle starts to look like a ball. How far we move the light depends on how contrasty we want the subject. And that is how sweet you want your tea. Do you like one spoon of sugar or five? But by using light, and specular highlight and shadow, we can make something that looks very flat and ordinary, look really beautiful, round, and give it shape. This is very important when we are lighting faces because we want to make people look slim. If we leave it like the ball in the beginning, they'll be flatly lit, they'll look ugly and fat, and they won't like it. It'll look like an amateur snap. We want to make it look professional. The only way we can do that, and to make it look three-dimensional, is by using our light. Now let's look at the light falling onto this figurine. This light is a small light source, situated just above camera, probably what most wedding photographers would do when they go and photograph the bride. They just put the light above the camera and shoot away. Now we have recorded the figurine, it's come out, it looks good, it's okay, but does it look any different to that which an amateur would do? I don't think so. Now, let's try and improve upon it. Let's move the light from where it's situated, from the camera position, and move it round a bit to give it a bit more shape and form. Right, can we see that the face is becoming a little bit slimmer because there's shadow coming into the face. Look at her busts. There is more shadow there as well. More shape and form. In fact, the gold stands out much nicer now, and the whole thing looks more three-dimensional. Wouldn't you agree that now she looks better than she was before? Much more shape, much more form, much more impressive and three-dimensional. What we've done now, we've changed over from having a small light source, like a, a flash on top of the camera, to a very large light source, which is a five-foot Ellingcrom Octa. It's square and it's very, very, very soft. And look at the lovely detail in the figurine. That between the highlight and the shadow, there's a lovely transfer of light. So it's not like highlight and all of a sudden shadow, but there's a gradation between the highlight and the shadow. It's beautifully soft. But we can still improve upon that by moving the light round and giving it even more direction and making everything seem even more three-dimensional. Get the light right round over here. Look how everything stands out. How the busts have much more shape and form. How the gold looks better. Everything looks beautifully soft and three-dimensional. A bit like window light. Now, if you photograph a bride looking like this, she'll look much, much better and the dress will be fabulous, taking a soft light and bringing it round. Also, the quality of her face and her skin will be much improved. Just notice now, with a large light source, the little pimple on the figurine's forehead. Just notice here how it's hardly visible because there's not much difference between the highlight and the shadow because the light is so soft and the fall off is so slow. Now, if we change from this very large light source to the very small light source in the same position, just notice how obtrusive it becomes. It looks like a very big pimple. If this was a spot, it would look like a very big spot. We're now going to demonstrate how to take a low-key picture of Louise, our model. For this, we're going to use a five-light Elecrom setup. We have a main, a, a, a main light or key light. We have a fill light. We have a kicker, kicker light. We have a hair light and a background light. We measure these lights by the Minolta four metre. Both of us use the Minolta meters all the time and have done for many years and given us very good reliable service. 
At the moment we're just being lit by the key light, the available light, modelling light from the key light and the fill lights on at the corner as well. So we're, what we're going to do now I think, we'll switch off the key light and show you how we build up the portrait light by light and get the effect which is the 3D effect that we are after. Okay Pete. Hot shot. Right, the key light's off, so don't adjust your sets. We're okay, we're on air, the tape hasn't broken down, don't worry about it. We're now being lit by the fill light only. Clear the Minolta, Minolta 4 and flash, and we have a 5.6 reading. At 160, I rate it 160. Yeah. We use Coda Color Gold. Gold, uh, at, rated at 160 in the studio. And we've got 5.6 reading, that's fine. Now I shoot at F11, so for me that is fine. In the studio, oh. at 11. We're now going to turn the main light on. And for this light, we should be getting an F11 reading, as we're in Charles' studio. We have F11 on our Minolta. I use 6.3 in my studio, but it doesn't matter what you're doing. But if you're going to have uh, a low-key lighting setup, then you have a difference of two and a half stops to one and a half stops in your uh, in your fill light to the main to the main light but generally we're going to use two light uh, two f stops and it's my studio I'll do what I please <laughs> 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 okay so I use two stops different so the fill light we want 5.6 and our main light, our key light, is going to be F11 and we set the aperture of the camera to F11, to the key light. Yes. So now we have the kicker light. Now the kicker light, because it comes in from an angle, starts to double up in power. And so we're going to have that at one stop lower than our main light. I'll just go and turn that on. That kicker light, if it was the same power as the main light, it would become the main light because it will be more intense. So we must make sure it's only the kicker light and not the main light. If it's too powerful, we start getting a burnt out effect on the edge of the face, which looks pretty bad. We don't really want that. On the Minolta, I'm using the flat, flash, flat, flat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using the flat disc instead of the round disc. This will give us, uh, enable us to use this. Uh, meter direct on without getting any extra light from the side. If we have the dome on it, it'll take into consideration all the lights that are coming onto the meter. And we don't want that at this time. All we want to do is measure the light. So what so does that read? I've got an F8 there. Well, we have set these up quite well. In yeah, the it's not bad, is it? Yeah. <laughs> now to the kicker light. The, the hair, hair light, light, which separates the model's hair from the background. If you don't have that hair light, and the person has dark hair, and you're photographing against a dark background, it just becomes one dark area, very unattractive. Uh, even people who don't understand about photographs will say, oh, I can't see where my hair's finishing, I don't like that one, and they won't buy it. So to get the separation, you need to adjust it as well to get the, yes. the stop less and the key. Is that stop less? Yes. Great stuff. Right, the other thing we still need to do, is separate the person from the background to make the person look three-dimensional and stand right away from the background. So, what we do then is have the background light on. This is the background light that we use, Helicon 50, with honeycomb, so that we can direct the power of the light to where we want it. And it's, it's low-key, so we don't want a very bright background. If you wanted it very bright, we can bring up the intensity of the backlight. We can even make the black background white. If we put two and a half stops more light onto the background than onto our key, and then our, onto our person, that background will become white. But we don't want it white at the moment. We want it low-key, so we need it to be nice and dark. Just enough separation to show there is a distance between the subject and the background. How about that? Fine, let's, so let's bring Louise let's in. Let's bring Louise, start. yeah, good idea. So let's recap. Fill light only. Now we switch on the key light. 
Now we're adding the kick light, then the hair light, and the back light. And we have a wonderful, beautifully lit portrait. We are now going to do some high key photography. Louise has now changed into a white dress and we're changing from the black background to the white background. Everything else has still remained the same. We still have to adjust all the lights and adjust everything to get a high key situation. Now, there's not that much really to adjust. All the lights are still set up for the low key. What we first must do is pull up the fill light, the intensity of the fill light. On the low key, it was about two stops less than the aperture we were shooting on. So on the low key we were shooting on f11 and we set the fill light for 5.6. Now we want to take it up to read approximately f8. So could you please bring up the intensity of the fill light? We'll measure it in a minute, but that looks about right. The other thing we want to do is bring down the lights. As we're sitting on the floor, where we're easy sitting on the floor, we need to bring down all the lights so they're still eye level to Louise. So bring them down first the right level. We also need to have less contrast in the face. On the low light situation, we don't mind having a shadow here on the face. In fact, we want that. It gives direction of light. But on high key, we want less shadow area here. That's why we turned up the fill light. And that's why we want to bring the key light over a bit more this way towards camera. Still not crossing the line. We never cross the line. We're still keeping to the same side of the camera. But Peter, can you bring it in, out a bit more, over a little bit more, so there's less contrast in the face. Yeah, that's okay. And the kick light also a bit. The kick light still gives a direction of light. We always need a direction of light. Okay. Now, the problem is the white background isn't white. It's grey or muddy. So we need to make the background look white. What I do here, I take off the honeycomb. We don't need a hair light on a high key situation because the background is very bright and it's reflecting back light. Remember what we said that the hair light on the low key separates the hair from the dark background but now her hair is darker and the background is, is very light. There is separation automatically. Okay that looks very intense. Now to get the background light to make a pure white background is very easy once you know how but it's very important to get it right. If the light is too dark on the background, the background won't be white, it'll be grey. If it's too bright on the background, it'll be overexposed. <laughs> She's enjoying herself, great. It'll, she'll be overexposed and the light starts creeping around her and the haze, it looks very, very bad. We want exactly the right amount to get a really brilliant white background. So, first of all, we'll measure the light coming on to Louise in the incident mode with the same as we did before. Yeah. Right, that's 11. That's fine. Now, to get the background to be totally white, instead of having the incident light meter, we change it into reflective light meter. All we need to do on the Minolta is take the incident disc off and put on the reflective disc. Turn it now to face the background. So it's now it's going to read the light that's on the background. We set 22. Point three. We really need it to be 22 and a half. We need it two stops more than our taking aperture. Our taking aperture is f11. We two that stops is 22 and a half. Exactly 22.6, which gives a lovely crisp white. If it's more than two and a half stops, we can go up to three stops. If it is three stops, then the, the light starts wrapping around Louise, blurring out. It won't, it won't be so good. It won't be such a nice portrait. So two and a half stops is the best. Two and a half stops, reflective light meter, reading off the white background for perfection in high key. We also need to change our film to a higher contrast film because we have less contrast now in the high key situation. So the very color HC film gives us extra punch, extra beauty. We've got some fantastic award-winning high key shots now with Louise. Let's go and do it. Yeah, yeah. come on, let's do it. <laughs> Here we go. Broad lighting and short lighting. What's the difference and how do we go about doing it? 
Now, first of all, to get that contemporary look of movement and action, we like to have leaning pictures, right? So we have diagonals, leaning. So Joel, just lean on towards me. Right, now we've got the broad side of his face here, Joel's face to the camera. This broad side is lit by the key light, and the short side is in darkness. That's what's called broad lighting. What it does, it makes a person look fatter. Now, providing they come to the studio and say, I always look so skinny, I really want to look fat, then you use broad lighting. However, most people come to my studio and say, I look too fat, I want to look slimmer. In which case, you wouldn't use broad lighting, you'd use short lighting. So let's turn, turn Joel around into the light, make him look even more dynamic, and want to make him look even better and more masculine by short lighting him. So get out a minute, Joel. Thank you. Let's turn it around this way. Same pose, into the light. So a male we want to put into the light. Can you do the other, put this leg down, other leg up, so you get even more into the light, even more leaning. Really lean into it there. That's a lovely contemporary look there. Just adjust. That's it. Cuffs. He's really leaning into the light. That beautiful, strong, dynamic position. And what else we've achieved is having, look at the camera, we have short light because this side, the shorter side, is being lit and this side over here is in darkness. So he's going to look slimmer, a better skin, and really nice and dynamic. So that is short lit. Okay? Now we'll do the same on the female. Thank you, Joel. I believe you do not need to spend a lot of money buying expensive chaiselongs, two normal stools, a bit of material, cover it over. Once the person's seated, that'll look great. Now, we can sit down over here like this and just like that, okay? Again, the far leg over this one to look really nice and slim and give a lovely line to your body. Okay, yes, hand there. Okay, again, we've made Louise look fatter than she is because we've broad lit her. The broad side of her face is being lit and the short side is being in the darkness. That's called broad light. We want to short light it. Very easily, all we need to do is to turn her face towards the light. Can you turn your head towards the light. Slowly, that's it. Let's tip your head a little bit and bring the eyes into the camera. What we've done now, instead of having this side lit, this side is now in darkness, so the, the broad side of the face is in darkness, the short side is lit, at the short light. All the light is falling over this way, bringing out all the detail in the dress, if there's a lot of detail in it, it will all be visible, giving a lovely, lovely curves to her body, it all stands out much nicer, we can see all the beauty of her or the figure. And she's short lit, she looks slimmer and beautiful. Most of the time, I use the five foot Elinchrom Opta as my main light. It's lovely and big and forgiving, it doesn't matter where you swing it, if it's three foot this way, four foot that way, so it's ideal if children move around, they still will be perfectly lit. However, when I'm photographing, for instance, a more mature person, an older man, maybe somebody even with a beard, and I want to show <laughs> his character, do a real character study, I don't want soft light, I want to show every whisker, every line, every crease in their face. <laughs> so I'll get rid of the key light and make my kick light the key light. So let's turn off the key light and move it right out of the way. Now, what was my kick light now will become my key light. So first of all, I don't want it soft. So let's take out the diffusion that we had in it when it was a kick light. Now it's a parabolic reflector with barn doors. The other thing is we have to turn up the intensity of it to make it into a key light. So let's just measure it. We want it F11, just like our other key light was. Let's take a reading of that. F11, exactly. Now where's the other light? It didn't really matter how high or how low it was because it was so large. This one is very important to get the exact placing of the light so we have light in the eyes. If the light is too high, the eyes go dark and there's no light in them. This is called raccoon eyes. Now, if you're photographing a raccoon, that's okay. <laughs> but for humans, we want to bring down the light until there is light in the eyes. Now, some people have set back eyes like Peter, so the light has to go really low down to get light into them. Most normal people 
have eyes which are not so far set back, so you won't need the light to be so low. So you have to adjust the light for each different person, and each set of eyes. Bring it down like that. Bring it round a bit more so we have a little bit light on the other side of the face. All right, that's perfect. We also need to feather a light a bit. If we want it less harsh, we just move it away. Feather it. If you want it really harsh, we bring it straight on. While we're talking about raccoons, let's look at bananas. Now this is a banana hand. The hand is hanging down here like a bunch of bananas. We must get rid of that because it doesn't look nice to have a bunch of bananas hanging in the photograph. And amputated fingers. We don't want amputated fingers, unless the person has amputated fingers. Then at least we don't show them. So let's get the fingers out so we can see the fingers there and the hand there, like that. Get rid of the bananas. Another important thing is the hair light. If you have people with light hair, the intensity has to be lower. People with dark hair, we have to bring it up. The other thing is that the hair light must be in the same axis as the camera. It must not go over to the other side. Let's, let's see what happens if it does go over to the other side. It lights up the dark side of the face, lights up this ear, and produces light on this area over here, which makes the person look like a balloon. If it's a girl with long, beautiful hair, and the light's over here, that's not too bad because it will show up the hair and bring out all the detail and colour in the hair. However, you still must be very careful not to have any light spilling onto the face. Another good shot to have is to have a profile. Most people will buy it because a profile is something they haven't seen of themselves before. So we have, we have a profile like that, everybody will see it, will buy it, providing they have a good nose. Make sure the nose is good. Peter's nose is just okay. If not, let them have, first of all, a nose job, <laughs> okay? They need a good nose. The other thing we need to do is to move our key light. So we bring it round just like we did, so it's the same direction according to the nose as it was when, the, when he was looking straight onto camera. And we need to bring it down so we have light in the eyes. Just lean forward a bit there, Peter. That's it. Great. That's a really good profile, leaving the shadow side of the face in deep shadow, perfect profile. Expression. My old mentor said, nothing else matters except expression, expression, expression in a photograph. If you haven't got expression, then you haven't got the guts of the photograph or the person. We can get expression by merely seeing it and then capturing. That's the easiest point. But you have to be very good at timing to be able to do that. You can set up an expression and keep it there for a few seconds and then take it. How do we get that expression? We implant into people's minds things of their past and in happy, having happy memories and sad memories. And people are a, a mirror of the photographer. If you are happy, then your subjects will be happy. If you are not happy, then your subjects won't be happy. We've all seen uh, people's photo uh, photographs that never look right and we say the expression isn't right and probably the photographer hasn't mastered his or her basic camera techniques. We have Joel here, and if I want to try and get a, uh, a nice expression, a good, sm a good expression, I might just, just look at him and give him a, a little smile there. And it's very few people that won't give you back a good smile after you smile at them. I think the smile is one of the, the best things a photographer can have. A natural one, that is. But then you might want a lively, uh, a lively expression, and then you get a bit lively. I say, hey, Joel, hey. I've just invaded his space, but uh, I know him quite well, this boy. <laughs> but then on, uh, we, we might try to get a more serious expression, and so that we become serious ourselves and quiet in our own. Uh, the photographer comes exp um, quiet themselves, and you get a more serious look just looking gradually at the person 
and then smiling again, you can get that smile back at them. And then remind them of things in their own life of uh, which you know about them through, uh, through talking to them before you've taken their photograph, which are happy or sad, and uh, you're going to get the best expression. Let's see how we get on expression throughout these next couple of days that we're filming. The basic male and female pose will make your work sparkle and give it a sense of direction and tidiness. So we'll bring over Joel, come through Joel, and just stand here for me. Now he's standing typically like someone would, which is a, a, a good shot for some, but he doesn't look confident there with his hand in front of himself. I call it the uh, shooting for goal shot. Just put your hands just down by the side of you. Okay. All right, just open your coat for me. Good. And just face me, would you? Just stand face me. Bring this right, right leg forward. Now, I want to see the light coming straight in to the masculine torso. And I want whatever shoulder is forward to the camera, I want that foot forward. Because the whole body then feels free and, and easier. We bring up this just a little bit, the trouser leg, and we bring a little bit of cuff in here, a little bit of cuff on the other side. Just no threatening, just let that come down, no threatening uh, behavior with his, with his hand. Just turn this foot uh, a bit close to me. That's it, jolly good. Okay. Just look here, John. I have to go back just towards the camera. That's it, that's pretty good, just straighten up. That's it. Turn your head just a little bit more. Okay, yeah. That's fine. Okay. And now we've got him. So if I want to change his chest, either make him much broader or make him slimmer, then the secret is to move this foot in degrees. And as he moves this foot, just move your foot over this way, John, you will see the relationship between the foot moving and his chest. And this makes him less, um, not so big, not so substantial. And uh, we can use this later on, as you'll, as you'll see in, in, in different photographs. So bring your foot back just a little bit more. That's it. So that's the basic pose, standing. The ba the basic male pose sitting, you get the weight on the rear buttock, exactly the same way as you did on the, on the rear leg before. And you just bring the legs, look how untidy everything looks now. We've got to tidy everything up. So just bring this foot forward now, here, and then just come forward on the, the seat just a little bit. Too much, that's it. And then bring this leg round here so we don't look right up into the crunch. Just bring a little bit of coffee out if you would, please, John. And und undo your jacket for us, would you please? We don't have to sit down, but I want to be in this shot. That's better. Jolly good. Great. Just lean your head this way a little bit. Bring this foot back a bit, a bit and that foot forward a little bit. Leaning over just reduces, if you've got a very uh, big man, a big tummy, just reduces his size. But also it gives um, the, the, the sitter a more interesting look, or he is more interested. So I'll just go back to look to camera to see what that looks like. It doesn't look too bad at all to me. And he's turned his head to the right hand, uh, the right side, uh, to our right side. And he's just holding his hands there. Well, we, that's, we can either have him hold his hand or we can just move that just there and move this just in here. Okay. And he just looks here. Great. Well, we're going to talk about space around here. Now, space, that's your cleps, Charles, yes? And here we would have a little bit more space on a, on a 2024 or whatever, whatever you're ordering from this. We would have a little bit more space at the top here than we would at the bottom and space to the side. Now, the space is very, int uh, is very important. 
because if we fill the space up with the image, then he is over square and it becomes less artistic. If we make Joel and we put him into a very small part of a stage, then we make him insignificant. It could be very artistic with some very strong lighting. But we're trying to do a portrait of Joel. We can do a portrait in the same pose from here to here, leaving the space around him. And now for the female pose, Louise. Louise comes into the picture. Watch the way she's holding my hand, or I'm holding hers. She can let go if she wants to. It's a good way. If you grab someone like that, then they can't let go and they feel threatened. So it's a good thing just to get them like this. And you can move them around. A sensitive girl like Louise, you can move around here, there, and everywhere. Oh. <laughs> just by you doing your basic uh, hand movement there. You come forward to me, Louise, and face me just this one. That's it, just there. Okay. Bring out this shoulder which is exactly the same as before, but this shoulder which is forward to the camera, we're going to bring that foot out. Yes, a little bit more here, just here. Point your toe, just touch my toe here. That's it, very good. Okay, we've nearly got her, she's absolutely, she's absolutely perfect, nearly. <laughs> just there, she's so good. Okay, we're gonna turn your head just towards the light here. Now what we've done now is we've taken the light away from her chest area and we've put the light just on her face and so all the light is coming and the face is illuminated beautifully. If once again we can change what we want to do with her, her back foot and how we want her to uh, come along, we can, we can butch her up as it were by moving her foot in this way a little bit more the back foot, all right, just, <laughs> she had a foot just a little different there. Okay, that's fine. And then, then moving your foot back again. That's it, just bit by bit. By bit. Sorry, that's a, you're not used to doing that. No. Okay, you're used to standing. So just hold yourself just here, and she holds herself there beautifully. So just turn your head now into the lower shoulder. That's lovely, and she's just there. And we can come up for a, uh, just a head and shoulders here, or three quarter, or we can go to full length. She looks great anyway. The seated position, the basic female seated pose. Louise, would you like to sit down there? Okay, Louise, like uh, many other chairs, has uh, sat on a chair which has lowered, is, is low at the back. So I'd like you to bring you forward onto, forward up here, that's great. Bring this left leg forward just a little. Good. And we just move this around here. Just bring your hand just here. Uh, lovely. And then bring your hand just up onto here. Okay, bring the elbow out. Fr fraction, just bring a little, little bit of a, tr a triangle. And I should go away and have a look at you just there. Okay, that needs to come down a little bit, that elbow. That's great. Okay, just bring your hand up there. And then just turn your head to this. Not too much there. That's good. Okay, lovely. So the space, once again, very similar as before, just to here and just down here. Or if we want to come in for a uh, three quarter length, just to here. Thank you very much, Louise. Thank you. Head control. One of the most important things I want to control from a camera angle is the tilt of the subject's head. Now, why do I want to do that? I could come over to her and start holding her and touching her up. I'd love to go and put my arms around her and move her face and everything, but she wouldn't like it. And we're not in it for me to have pleasure, we're in it to get some really great uh, shots of her. So most people, in fact everybody, has a space around them which they do not like invaded. So if I was really going to need to, to move something, for instance her hair, I would lean over I'd say, Louise, I just need to adjust that hair, and I'd do it like that, and lean away, so she won't be worried that I'm going to go on top of her. I don't want her to feel worried. If she's worried, she'll look worried in the, in the portrait. So we must make her always be at ease. So I've developed this remote control head device, which works on Duracell batteries, and this is it. And the batteries never run out. And what I would do, 
anybody who comes in the studio, no matter if they're children or adults or old people or whatever, it works for everybody exactly the same. And they all enjoy it as well, they love it. So Louise, I want you to pretend that your head is in my hands, okay? Now, when I move my hands, like that, that's lovely. Great. Let's see if it tilts as well. Lovely. That's a bit oily, that one. Let's do it again. <laughs> that's a great. Okay. Fantastic. Now, I can go back to my camera position, way back there, and I can say, Louise, and she will turn her head exactly the way I want it to be, without me having to go over to her and without me making her feel uncomfortable. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Louise. Remember, use your remote control head device. Do not become a space invader. The 10 basic poses. Now, when I first started in photography, I used to take shots of a couple. I used to come in the studio, and I used to take full lengths and some close-ups and sit them on the floor and do a few more. And that was it. I never knew what to do. It's as much as I could do without going and looking at a book to get some ideas and some poses and things like that. Now, when you're photographing one person, it's quite easy because you just lean them here, lean them there. When you get two people, it's group dynamism. And you can get something beautiful together, all different shots together. But you have to know how to do them. So to get this beautiful group dynamism, we need to develop some different poses, which we can do very quickly, without hesitation, and which will be great fun for the couple to do. Now, this could be children, they could be adults, they could be teenagers, they could be anybody, even old people. Except that's the last numbers, the 8, 9, and 10, we wouldn't do for older people. But uh, the 10 basic poses are basically for everybody. Each pose, you can take two or three different shots, as you'll see in a minute. So let's have our models, Louise and Joel, over here, please. Right, lovely. Now, what I want you to do, Louise, is you can put your weight in your back foot and just <coughs> bend this knee. Now, this is the show leg, this leg. This is the show. This gives a lovely, lovely curve to the body. And if you just tip it in a bit like that, lovely. Turn yourself a bit more around towards the camera, over there. That's it, lovely. Joel, same thing. Now, we have straight lines. We don't want straight lines. Straight lines are boring. Verticals are boring, horizontals are boring. We want to have diagonals, we want pyramids and triangles. So, all we need to do to get a triangle is put your hand on your hip. Look at that lovely triangle. Oh, that's it, lovely triangle. Look at that. Now, it, it looks much better. Why does it look better? Because we haven't got a straight line. So that's what I meant by not having straight lines. You've got to have triangles. Same with Joel, straight line going down. So if you just bend that hand, that's it. Arm round the waist. Okay, let me get to camera position, see what that looks like. I'm doing everything from camera position over here. Now, that's great. Okay, a little bit closer. Okay, Louise, turn yourself a little bit more around towards me. Should we just, that's it, lovely. Okay, heads together. Now, your head's in my hand, Joel. Great, okay, lean your head together. Eyes at me. Oh, lovely, okay. Give a bit of a squeeze, Joel. Oh, lovely, okay. Great, that's a full length. Now we're going into a half length. Right, we don't want to see the back of the hand. We don't want to see the inside of the hand. It doesn't look good photographically. So we just turn it around. We want to see the side, the cutting edge. And we just want a bit of his sleeve. Look how I'm leaning forward. I'm not invading his space, neither of their space. That's lovely, okay. Let's get back to the camera. Let's see what it looks like from camera angle. Great, but they don't look together yet. Joel, lean in, your heads are touching. Great, Joel, she's a pretty girl, come on, that's it. Great, that was a half length. Now we're going in for a close-up, tight head and shoulders. Okay, Joel, your head's in my hand. Lovely, now lean yourselves together. That's lean into him, great. Okay, Louise, yes. Okay. Fantastic. Pose number two is called front to front, her front to his front. And it's turned on, that's it, lovely. Let's hold on to each other, lovely, okay. Hold hands in front. That's, I guess, that's, that, that's lovely. Just lean in. Okay, back to the camera position. Still do full length. Back forward, lovely. Okay, Louise, we want to her head towards, a bit more towards the light. So, your head's, that's it, lovely. Just tip, that's it, your head's in my hand. Okay, Joel, don't worry about it. <laughs> that's it. Great. Full length, in for close up. Okay, Louise, why don't you put your hand on Joel's shoulder there? That's it, lovely. Great, yeah, lovely. Just nice and gentle, yes, that's it. 
Just bend that hand a bit. Heads together. Great. All right. Louise, your head's in my hand. Lovely. Okay, tilt a bit. Right, Jill. Give her a squeeze. Yeah. Great. Okay. That was shot number two. Front to front. Facing me away from the light, so facing this way. So you want her away from the light, head back into the light, nice to the camera. And Joel, just put your hand around there, that's it, wanna hand it lovely. Okay. Try putting your hand on your, your waist, that's it. The other way around. Great, so have a triangle. This hand just down there, you can hold his hand, you wanna hold his hand? That's it, bit of cuff, lovely. Okay. Okay. Breeze. Head round a bit more, lovely. Okay, it's too much hand there, Joel. Just get the hand a bit further back. Lovely. Okay, lean into him. Joel, lean into her. That's it. Okay. Me. Louise, a bit more. That's it. Great. She down a bit. That sexy look. Yes. Great. Okay, that's a half length. We can't go into her to a big tight close up, otherwise it looks like she's very small. We have to be able to see that she's still sitting down. So that will be a full length and a half length. Right, Louise, turn your head around a bit more. That's it. Lovely. Okay, lovely. Chin down a bit more. That lovely sexy look, okay, Joe. Oh yes. Okay, you could both be looking over to the into the light. Just turn your head right round. That's it. Look at the same point. Just look at me over here. Okay. And leaning closer together. Okay, lovely. Oh, okay. Great. Okay, I'm just gonna adjust your bow tie and the wing collar a little bit. I'm not invading your space, am I? No, you don't feel invaded at all. I'm not space invader. Okay. Right, just back to the camera. Okay, nice and close. Lovely Louise, that's it. Run a bit more towards me, that's it. Okay, you stick your head, lovely Joel. Okay, great. I'll give her a bit of a hug there from behind, yes. Okay, now, if you can see the way they're sitting, that's great, both of them are beautiful weight, that's fine. But if, for instance, the man was a bit overweight, the easy way to rectify it would be, instead of him sitting with both legs in front like this, would be to get a minute, Joel, and just go back like this, and sit like that, back away from the camera. Okay, you can try it. Again, always show your subject what you want them to do, so they, a little bit further back, that's it. Now, and get close together. Now, if he was a big, overweight guy, we're hiding all of his weight in his tummy behind her. So the back to front shot is great for people who are overweight, to hide them behind the beautiful one in front. Okay, if you've got two, be two beautiful ones, that's fine. If they're both overweight, you've got extra problem. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, that looks, it's a very nice shot anyway between his legs. She's sitting in between his legs. But if he's overweight, that is the ideal place to keep him further away from the camera. So you keep the slimmer one closer to the camera, the leaning forward, and the further one further away and leaning forward. Okay. That's it. You can say where you are, Joe. So all these actions are very little actions. We don't do a huge amount of moving and posing in between shots. Okay, and you're looking at me, Louise, that's it, come on. The man of your dreams here, yes, great. Okay, and now I had the shoulders. A little bit more forward, Joel, you just, that's it, Louise. Okay, now I want this lovely, great shot, come on, let's get it, yeah, great. Okay, fantastic. Lovely, okay, nice quiet shot. Do you know it more, Louise, that's it, great. Great. Now, Louise, if you can just sit like that, so this leg is over that one. That's it. And Joel, like this, please. A little closer, come in nice and close. And put this one away. That's lovely. Now, one great idea which will make you a better photographer. When we get back to our camera and we're ready to shoot. Everything is absolutely ready. Joel, just put your hand on her shoulder again. Down a bit. That's a little closer together. Now, for all intents and purposes, you're ready to take that portrait. Now, if you can get into the habit of saying out aloud, that looks great. Now, just one little adjustment I've got to make. And you don't know what it is yet because you haven't seen it. But the fact you've said it, and you said it out aloud, is going to make you have to go back there and find something to adjust. Let's see, what can we adjust? Okay, look, fingers. Okay, let's put your fingers out gently. That's it. Lovely. You'll always find something to adjust. You always will. But just by saying it will make you a better photographer in their eyes and you'll have a better product to sell because it will be more perfect. You'll be able to go for higher qualifications 
you may win awards, all that just by that simple adjustment. It's that little bit that makes all the difference. Now, another one, little thing. When somebody's sitting down on the floor, you can adjust their height. When they're standing up, whatever height they are, you're stuck with it. But if somebody is tall, once they sit down on the floor, you can make them look very, very tall or very short, just by moving this leg in a few inches, in or out. Now, for instance, if Louise was a very short girl, and she pushed that leg out, just put that, push that leg out, she looks very tall, she looks like a six-foot model. If she was a six-foot, five-inch model, and she wants to look shorter, she just needs to bring that leg in, bring it closer, closer. A bit more. She looks like, she looks very short now. She looks like a midget, doesn't she? Okay. No, you don't have to look like a midget, so just put your leg out a bit more. That's it. Lovely. So to make her look as long as possible, just bring that leg out. That's great. So remember, that leg, by moving it a few inches, you make the foot look longer. Okay, heads together. Joel. Louise. Now just bring your head round this way. That's it. Just a bit. Okay. Okay, Joel, there's too many fingers there on her hand. That's it. Lovely. Okay. That would make great. All right, Louise. Fantastic. Right, that was a full length. Then go into her head and shoulders. Okay, Joel, just lean a bit more forward towards me. Louise, your head's in my hands. That's it. Lovely. Okay, there's too much hand showing there, Joel. Just bring, lose that hand a bit in the back. The arm, just bring it down a bit. Okay, me. Okay. Oh, Joel, give her a squeeze. Yes. Okay. Louise can stay exactly as she is. Joel, can you just turn around so your legs are going the other way? Just turn your body around a bit more, Louise. Just, that's it. Lovely. And bring your shoulders a bit more. So your bodies are more facing towards each other. Bring that leg out of it. That's it. Leg out this way. Like that. Lovely. A bit more. Don't squash it in. You're tall. Guy. Right. Okay. And just lean yourself together. Okay. I think it's too far out. Maybe put it down, Joel. You look uncomfortable. You're more comfortable like that? Okay, Louise. That's it. Lean in. Okay, there's one more thing I need to adjust. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to find out. Is that okay? Bring this hand. It's too straight coming towards the camera. Just back of it. That's it. We'll leave a little, bit, a little gap there so it makes it look slimmer. Even slimmer. Okay, right. Hi, is that me? Lovely. Okay, Louise. That's it. Joel, that's it. Great. Okay, go into to a half length. Okay, okay, we'll go for a quieter one this time. Nice and quiet. That's it. With me. Lovely. Right. Very easy to do from pose number eight. You just bring your bodies across each other. So, Louise, you're coming this way a little bit. Don't, don't move your legs, no, just this way. Joel, you're going that way, so your body's cross over. That's it, hand over here. Down like this, that's it. See how easy it is from one pose to the other? Spend that leg. And then use hand on the floor, lean right down on the floor. Pull a bit more, that's it. Okay, Joel, get it closer together. Okay. Right, okay, Joel. That's it. Okay, Louise. Just getting it closer, snug together, that's it. Oh, yes, okay. Pose number 10, the rollover. <laughs> okay. Now, what you need to do, please, you don't have to move, to move very far. Just if you can, your legs over there, you go down on your, on your tummy. Like this. This leg over this one, like that. That's it. Yep, love it. Put your arm across a little, right over. You're down a bit too low, Louise. Just put yourself. That's better. And your legs a bit further back. Right. Can you bring that top leg over the bottom leg? Joel, hand out that way. No, that way, not pointing towards the camera. Lovely. Okay. Joel, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Add me. Great. Those were the 10 basic poses. This is pose 11, but we cut it out. So now we're going over to the man himself for the magic posing, Peter Dyer! Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a great session we had then.
Fantastic session, really good. I, watch, I was watching from the side all the time. Absolutely fantastic. And I know that we all learned a tremendous amount from it. And if you can go back to those uh, basic 10 poses, which you've got uh, head and shoulders, full lengths and everything, you've got 30 poses there straight off. I know we use them all the time, don't we, Charles? We should. And if you change your lighting, you've got perhaps the thousands and thousands of poses to do. That's right. You just move the lights from side to so side. Don't we'll forget backgrounds either, will you, Pete? No. Changing backgrounds, yeah? And if you sit upon a friend, <laughs> 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 you can get even more. Okay, we'll go on from here and do some other poses with Louise and Joel. I'll have a rest in the meantime. <laughs> Now we're going to get some uh, more creative pictures from uh, Louise and Joel, our couple. These pictures are perhaps a little bit more advertising-y than uh, we may have seen before. But my background is in advertising. But a true photographer must be able to take all sorts of pictures. And we want to be, try we want to be progressive. The ability of a, of a photographer must be to get on with people. And to do this, you must be able to get on with people that perhaps you've never seen before, or I've only seen over the last five minutes. This isn't the case with uh, Louise and Joel. Joel I know very well. Louise I've only known for a little while. But we will try and get some intimate pictures here of a, a different nature. I'm using just an ordinary chair covered with black so that it doesn't uh, distract from this video and another chair which is also black so I'd like to ask Joel to come in and we'll just start here he's going to just moving the, this chair around so I can get the same angle on Joel the same angle on this light this chair and get onto Joel just sit yourself down there, Joel. Let in a nice diagonal line here. We're going to just tidy him up here. In this case, in, try not to overfuss if you can, because the more you overfuss in the beginning, <coughs> the uh, more the, the couple will feel, or anybody will feel, sensitive. So just come in here. Now. She almost does this if she likes it. Bring this foot now out over here. Now lean your body in a little bit more. Turn it here. We've got to watch the fingers and the, the wrist just there, that little bracelet. Turn your head to me, Joel, just a little bit more. Turn your head to me a little bit more. You come in there. Turn your head in there, lovely. All right, you turn your head back to her. Good. Chin down just a little, and your eyes just up to me, just a fraction. Right, that's our first one. <laughs> and we may just go, everyone, just, just smiling like that. Okay, that's very nice here. We just come across here and just come in there and lean. This time, we're going to come in very, very close on this picture. So, Joel, put your arm around over here and you're going to turn your back. So, I just see your back. Just come right in. Now, lean your head down here at this angle. Turn it back. Joel, you've moved too much. Turn your head to me here. A little bit more. You turn your head. Come, come away from him a fraction. And now come in here. Like that. Bring this in. Just up here. We've got to move this distraction here. We're going to put his hand, her hand into his wallet. <laughs> I know she's not after his wallet. And this hand just gently goes here. He doesn't know this along, so he can't do anything, anything more. Turn your head. And then you just look down here. Look down here. That's one. But we're going to do another one. Just look down here. Joel, that's it. Okay, now look at me. Hey. <laughs> nice. Come away from there for a minute. Joel, you stay. You stay there. If you come in here and turn your back right to Joel. This way. Right over here. I know you don't know what I'm doing. So we're going to turn and face and face that wall. Bring your foot, this foot, right over here. Good. Turn. Turn this way. A little bit more in there so that we can see the line. Let me just go back now. Turn your, look at my fingers here. 
Let's have this lovely back. And she's going, can I move your hair back over here so I see a view of your turn like this? And then lean right the way back so your hair is coming. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's it. Lovely. Turn there. Great. Let's have this hand just here. Just moving like that. Fabulous. Turn your head up this way. Look a little happier, Joel. Turn your head back to Joel a little bit more if we can. We get this hair just flowing in there. That's it. Look at my fingers here. I'm just going to... Okay, look at my fingers just there. And that point, just up there. Like that. That's good. Lovely. Joel, not too much of a smile there. Turn your head this way. That's it. Lean back over this way. That's great. Just up there. That's great. Okay. Very nice. That's more over time. Right. Great. So we've got one there. <laughs> lean here. Lean, lean, lean back. We just turn, turn to me. Just oh, that's it. Great, great, great. Lean onto him. Yeah, you were just searching for his hand, and I like that. Search for his hand, but just bring this hand just here. Just hold that there. Lovely. Turn. Look at me, John. Just a bit. Chin down. Just a bit. Not too much. Easy. You're fantastic. I've got to get you just a little bit different, Joel. Can you move your bottom over that way a little bit more? Right over there. That's it. That's it. Easy, easy, easy. It's easy. easy. Come off there for a front. Lean in. Sometimes a, f a, sometimes a position that you do doesn't work just right, but you just got to turn it. Come to me. Turn your head to me a little more. Lovely. Just see you just filling with your hands. See a straight line there. Just. Give this hand just a straight line the same as her, so you, you're in unison. That's it, yes, put your fingers into his. If you can, just put your fingers just in it. Lovely. Turn your head to me a lot more, just there. Bring that hand just here. Okay, now. Good, now we've got you. Lovely, come away from there. Great, I'm just looking for another stool. Oh, would you just here. We haven't moved Joel very much. But just come up over, th over there. I'll straighten this up for the camera a bit more. You're going to come in here. Just in this way. And when you sit down, don't sit too close. If you sit close, I won't be able to get the diagonal line. So you sit further away. So sit your bottom just about there. We can always move up later. I don't know. Let's see how that might be just like that. Now you bring your hand in here. Now just now turn this this here. Why don't you can just look at turn and look at me. Turn look here. Just a bit more. Lovely. Okay. Turn and look down at her jaw. Smashing very strong with jaw. If we light it from stronger over from the key light, uh, from the uh, accent light, it'll be, be even nicer. So turn your head this way, just a fraction, just lean it down. Just look at my fingers, just only only with your eyes. Come back there, just look at my fingers, just there. That's it. Squeeze his bicep just a little. Uh -huh. oh. <coughs> okay, Joel, a lovely strong one of Joel just by himself there. And we can just come in very, very close. Loving him. The hand just strong here. Lovely. She can just turn there. Right in there. And lower your eyes just there. That's it. Okay, turn this way. I might do the same again, just like that. Can I just have your hair just again? And just come, just kind of roll there. Joel, move. Can you move your butt? Can you move this out a little bit? Here, now, lean your head just on his hand. Sorry, sorry, sorry. move little things away because the, the sitter can't see what hair's there then it doesn't matter I think. And Joel's got a few little things on his nails, on his uh, fingers which uh, when he was a lad he probably hurt his fingers a little bit. So we're just covering those up. Uh, just squeeze her hair Joel, just squeeze her hair. Alright. Lie. 
We might just come in straight from a, a real close up from this sort of area, just in here, just with some soft light or something. And again. Okay, come off there for me. Well, good, very good. Come away from there now for me. And come and sit here. And just sit there for me. I saw you sitting when you were in, outside in the studio. Uh, and you were just sitting something like this. Uh, just before we took this shot. So I think it was something, yeah, yeah, something like that. So just get into, just get into that. Okay, right, now what did you do with it? So we just got a nice strong line, leading line coming straight into here. But the, the light into the eye is not going to, we probably have to light this a bit better. You can see there's a little darker area just here. And we might have to put our light down, but uh, I'll just take up the, the head. Joel, would you come now? Bring your feet. Okay, that head angle. Remember the head angle. Yes, Joel, would you come and sit down here with your feet over there and sit on that side of your body? Okay, bring this hand round here and just come right in and lean your head against hers. Give come over that way. We're going to make some space for ourselves by this diagonal again, uh, by moving his bottom further away, and we're just going to have that there. Right in. She loves him just there. She just puts his head there. But we're going to get, he is in going to be enveloped by her. As you can see. Just here. It's going to take a little distraction away from And the highlight there, Joel's eyes just a bit, this hand just here. We must see this hand, it means a lot. And we mustn't make it look like that Joel has a wig on. <laughs> and that's a good thing just there, okay. Right, okay, right. just squeeze him just a little bit. Your eyes this time, your eyes only, lower them down to Joel's. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, easy. I didn't mean to press the button then, but just turn your head to me a little bit this way. Up a little higher. This way. Now your eyes, oh, 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 keep there. Now just your eyes, like that. Lovely, good. That's it, okay, Joel. You're drifting off, don't look at me. I'm not the most important thing, just look at my finger here. That's it. Okay, that's lovely. Look at me now, giving that smile you got. Hey, come on you two. <laughs> Fine. Uh, turn this way. Bring your legs apart just a little, will you? Joel, come here. Back into here and lean back in here. And bring, lean right now, right back here. You don't know what I'm going to do yet. Turn your head to me. We're going to do the opposite. Turn here. Lovely and close together. Just turn you. This way. I need you at a higher angle just here, just to get the. Oh yeah, now look how proud that she's just becoming. Well, she is proud, but I mean very, very proud here. Joel, his head's up too high, so we're just going to turn. There, that's it. Just going to... That could be very interesting if we came in to Joel, just doing... Look at me now, Joel, and came right into this eye just here. But I feel a long shot, then it's distracting. So we're just going to come on. Okay. Joel, just your eyes, just to me. Just to the camera. Great. Okay. That's good. You turn your head away. Now your eyes back to me. Good. Turn your head this way. Now your eyes to the camera. All right. Didn't mean to press it. I've got a very sensitive trigger here. <laughs> Chin down just a little. It's just on the side. Okay. Look at the camera. Turn your head to me a little bit more, please. Over that way. Chin down just a bit. Now look up then. Okay, even more. Okay, right. Great. <laughs> oh, just turn. Turn this way. Come in there. Love him just here. We've got a nice diagonal, but I think it's just a little strong. Just in there. Turn these ones. Something similar, these are together, but. Okay, right. Uh, chin down just a bit. Your head up, Louise, just a fraction. Just, can you hear what his head's saying? 
Yeah, you can't, can you? <laughs> All right. Come on, stay in there for me. Good. Uh, Joe, uh, you sit just here. Sit your bottom just there. Joe, come up the back over here. Just have your chin on on Louise's head there. So lean, turn this way. She can let go of me if she wants to. Okay, now she's gone too, Joe, you're too far. Go back a little, go back. Take your arm away, that's gonna help. Let's take your hand away, just completely. Let's get Louise right first. Chin up, Louise. Like that. Go back, this would work better in black, I think, with Joel in black. Go back a little, and you're a little high. Just try and bring your chin down to there. Okay, now let's have a look. Try and just uh, come off, just relax. Just come off there, Joel, and don't sit. Don't sit on your leg. Try to sit on, that's it, okay, good. Now come in, let go of her. She's not yours yet. <sighs> come forward here. Chin up, your head this way, Joel. Come forward now to me. Okay. Your head up just a little bit more. Your head, your chin down, Joel, just on there. You allow your eyes to. Joel now, his head is moving away from the camera, and that probably at this probably at this camera angle is probably alright. But we're just trying to do something while we're here. Joel, turn your head away from the camera. Joel becomes weaker. Turn your head really towards the camera. Joel heads becomes foreshortened, and so we want to get the right height, well, we want to get the right camera height, and we'll be doing this a lot, Charles and I, showing you this right height of the camera angle. Joel, turn your head back this way a little bit. That's great. Now we've just got to move your arms around there because I want to. Just let them float. Now I can go a little bit more from the. Your head up there. Okay, Joel, your eyes down, and your eyes just up here. Okay, great. Okay, turn and look at me. <laughs> good, good. Bit more, bit more, bit more. Hey, good. Okay, thank you ever so much. Oh. Come on. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Oh, hello. How are you? You look so smart. Come on. What's your up. name? What's your name? What's your name? Alice. What is it? What's your name? Alice. Alice, isn't that lovely? What a lovely name. And who is this? Hello. Mm. Helena. Is it Helena? Oh, it's beautiful. Isn't she a lovely girl? Have you ever seen a banana dolly in your whole life? Have you? <laughs> you haven't, have you? You haven't seen a banana dolly? Yes. You want to see my banana dolly? I You want to see it? Yes? Well, let's go. Oh, come, on. come on then. Let's go. Let's go see your banana dolly. Yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah. Shall I show you where it is? You know where it is? Come, come on, Daddy. Can you come? Come on, Mum. Come, come on, on, we're back. We're all going. Come we're on. all going in. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't that fantastic, eh? Isn't that great? Anna, can you see? Look. The lights. Can you see the lights? Yeah? Do you like it in here? Yes? You come over here, I'll go and get banana dolly for you. Would you like to see the banana dolly? Yeah, you come and sit down. Should we sit the banana dolly? Right, you sit. Come, come sit over there. And then we'll get the dolly. Come on. No, don't force it. Come and sit on the floor. Come and sit on the floor with Mummy. Should Mummy come and sit with you? Alice. Mummy come and sit down. And I'll get... Oh, I've got something in here coming out. What's this? Oh, 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 o
Very good. Okay, you sure you can see from there, yes? Yeah. Okay, lovely. So move over a bit more over here so, so that uh, they can sit next to you. Yes? Lovely. Okay. Can you turn around? Don't put your arm around there. She won't like that. Can just put your hand around there. <laughs> can you put her facing you? So she leans up again. So. That's it. Okay. Right. Okay. Banana dolly now. Look at the banana dolly. Yes. Hand down. Put your hand down. And it's, yeah. Lovely. Okay. Now, do you want to have a little banana dolly? Watch. <laughs> you're watching, are you? Look. Ready? Hand down, Alice. Hand down. Ready. Steady. Woo. Ouch. Hand down, Alice. Hand down. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Did you do that, Alice? <laughs> you come down, come up with. That's it. Whoopsie. Let's go down. Ow. We'll just do a few of them on our own. Hold on for a minute. We'll just get a different stool. We'll do some on our own. Oh, did you see that funny dolly? Yeah. Whee! What was that? Is that nice? Let's okay, we'll do that on our own, yes? Yeah. Okay. If you sit around this way, so she's facing you. Oh, so pretty. Okay, and you sit over there next to mummy now. You sit with mummy and we'll watch this, see what's going to happen now. Look. <laughs> I don't know. I see. I see. Whoopsie. I dropped my ball. I dropped the ball. That was silly, wasn't it? With that silly Uncle Charles. I don't know. Meow. Where's Pussycat? I see. Boom. Ah. You want to see? You can sit on there if you want to. I'll move everything. I'll sit over here. Look, all the lights are moving. Oh. Yeah, we do that. Should we move that light as well? Yeah? Should do that? Okay. Just because he's such a good boy, I'll do that as well for you. Don't do it for everybody. I need a very, very good shoulder. Is that okay over here like that? You want it there? Is it okay? Okay. Let's get over here. That's it. Ready, steady. What can I just really say? I forgot. Ready, steady. Right, we'll get the white background down. Just some I'm helping you on this. Help me take it. up to maximum because they don't want harsh shadows we want to have nice and light shadows don't we good that's it lovely wow fantastic got too far back now this got too good no got too far back i'm going to change the low key vignetta to the high key vignetta in, soften it down. That's it. We're going to make a view portrait, so change this to view. The lights need to go down a bit. Sitting on the floor, so the lights will go down, right? That's it, that's lovely. Okay, give me your arm round it's time to arm round it. Uh, ready, steady. See that? Lovely! Great! We've got some fantastic shots there. Amazing. <laughs> With children, it may be difficult to photograph children, but boy, if you get into photographing a set of kids, they will be with you for years. Mm -hmm. You see, most children, they fall into two categories. One is the shy and clingy, and the other one is the wild and confident. Now, the shy and clingy is the one that's always going onto mummy and, and doesn't want to let go. And you have, to <laughs> you have to talk with them and play with them and get them to like you. And once you get them to do that, which may take half an hour, it may even take an hour of a session, but once you can get them away from the mummy and they actually like you, they, will, they may actually become wild and confident. And they're, they're yours. Now, 
if that parent wants to take that child somewhere else, she'll remember that it took a long time for the photographer to get that child to stop being shy and clingy. So that child is yours. The same with a wild and competent child. They'll come in and they'll throw everything all over the place and make a big noise and everything. And the parent will, won't know what to do. They'll say, oh, well, yes, uh, he's, he's, he's rather confident. Now, the first thing to do is keep that parent out of the camera room because that child is only showing off to the parent. It probably doesn't receive enough attention most of the time. And the way to receive attention is to become naughty and wild. So you keep the parent out of the camera room and get that child in the camera room and treat that child like it's an adult. Talk to the, to the parent, to that child, and that child will come to respect you and you'll get some great shots. Now, if any time the mother wants to take her child, her wild child, to another photographer, you can rest assured the boy or girl will throw a tantrum. Light. Without light, there'd be no photography. In fact, this program that you're now watching would be a radio program. That would be a pity. You'd be missing a lot. These days, photography is easy. It's easy to take a photograph. However, it's not so easy to make a photograph. Now, rumor has it that the two men that I'm just about to introduce you to, Peter Dyer and all right, darling. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All people who showed me say, darling. Look at the quality of light on this figurine now. Look how everything stands out. And the transfer of light between the highlight and the shadow. It's so soft and so smooth. But we can still improve upon that by moving the light round subject. Look at the detail now. Look how the breasts start looking, coming out. <laughs> right, put the breasts in and let's go for another one. 8.3, we're nearly there. Uh, uh, <laughs> can't reach it. All oh, right. So we change from the incident disc to the reflective disc and turn it round to read off the background. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. <laughs> uh, we're going to change over from the instant disc on the light meter to the reflective disc, which will make the Minolta into a reflective light meter. On there. Whoops. <laughs> Do the start mill again. We're going to change the incident disc on the light meter. <laughs> 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 the reflective disc on the light meter. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>